Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, we're going to uh, explore a bit more into setting joints to produce power and to look at the, the uh, releasing the qua by spiraling down. And uh, these are two questions that, that have come up recently and in several other chats, and I thought we'd take another look at that. And then we're gonna get into working the other side of that, that exercise that I introduced uh, last week, and uh, which kind of gives us a way of, of practicing some of these things. So the, uh, let's begin with the idea of setting joints to generate power. So first of all, the, the word set means to put something in a specific place. That means to, in other words, to assign time and space to matter and energy. You're taking something, a thing, and you are putting it in a specific time and place. And if you do that, that becomes the yin pole of the system, that, that, that piece. And from that, you can extend from that in a yang expression. And the ability to hold those poles in opposition generates power. So the, uh, the term power, I find a lot of people kind of cringe whenever I, whenever I use it. Uh, it there's a lot of, uh, uh, oh, we don't, we don't, we're not into power here. Or, you know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and that kind of thing. And there's a, a, some squeamishness about, uh, about power. But power really just means the ability to do something, to do anything. So if you don't have any power, then you have no ability to do anything. And that gets makes life kind of boring. So your ability to, to use power correctly and wisely is kind of a part and parcel of what we're doing here in Taiji Chuan. We're trying to learn what is the appropriate energy for any given situation. We meet the situation, we say, oh, what's the, what's the right energy for this, this you know, these circumstances, you know, so the, um, it, yeah, uh, there's a certain power that's required to cradle a baby. We don't think of it that way, but it is, you know, if you don't have, if you're not able to do that, if you don't have the, the, the support necessary to do that, then the baby doesn't get cradled. You know, it's a different kind of power than say, intercepting a punch coming in, you know, or even, delivering a punch. So, but they're both kinds of power and they each have their circumstances in which they're useful. So what we want to do is be able to learn how to generate all kinds of different ways to generate power and be able to be smart enough to know when to use the ones that we have. And uh, being able to, use the a gradient scale to determine how much of this type of power that I use at a given time. You learn to, by understanding Jin, by, um, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago, that, that learning to understand energy comes from feeling, from conscious feeling and conscious movement. And that's something that is, that awakens the spiritual um, illumination that is potential within Taiji. So uh, in terms of setting a joint, so it, what we're doing there is we're assigning a position or a relationship. So in other words, uh, setting something doesn't mean that it's mobile, immobilized uh, uh, absolutely. It means that it's, it is this, uh, a relationship is defined between two poles. So, as uh, as humans, we're you know we're constantly in motion, whether we are sitting still or not. You know, as as we humans, if you're if you're at the equator, you're you're moving. The Earth is rotating at about 
7,000 miles per hour, or no, 1,000 miles, miles per hour, and uh, you're, you're part of that. You're moving. And the Earth is rotating around the sun at about, uh, I think, 70,000 miles per hour. So we're always in motion, and it's relative to what? So even as I'm turning my body, I want to be able to establish points which are, are relatively stable. So if I'm turning and I'm turning and my arm is moving like that, that everything is moving and there's no, there's no power because there's no, um, there's no point of reference. Whereas if I'm turning and I set my elbow and then I turn, then I have power. Right? But why? Because the elbow is, is still with reference to my body and it's still with reference to my hand. So then I'm able to, to, to generate uh, gin by, by doing that. So the, uh, our ability to consciously, mindfully assign a still point in the process is directly proportional to our ability to generate power. And this is a different way of looking at these things, I think, because a, a lot of us have, you know, where it's everything is in motion in our Taiji. And in fact, I think in the classics, they talk about that, that everything has got, if one thing moves, everything moves. And that's a different idea than what I'm talking about. And that is that within that, all that movement, there are still points. There are there are substantials and insubstantials. There are yangs and yins. And being able to differentiate those consciously allows you to generate power. And quite effortlessly, whenever you get when you get the hang of it. Uh, questions so far? Everybody cool on this? Anybody? No, 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 no. Okay, all cool? Yes. Good. Okay, great. Oh, you have something, Stan. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, my thing is, uh, when we start the, uh, um, when we're doing that, we set the knee, and then we're supposed to spir uh, spiral to one side or the other. And to me, uh, the way I'm seeing it, it almost seems like somehow, uh, the upper part of the bone has to sort of start going like downwards, like with the hip, it seems to be like it's going. So uh, I'm just wondering, because it, to me, it seems like the uh, angle of the upper leg has to change a little bit, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, so you're talking about, when you talk about the bone, you're talking about the femur, the thigh yes. bone? Yes, it seems like it has to, uh, the whole, uh, the upper part of the leg has to sort of go here, uh, downwards like that, to Depending get the effect, spiral effect. You're talking about the knee? You're, no, you're, not you're the knee. The knee is fixed, but the upper part of the leg, above the knee. The, because the, to the me, femur, it's, the, the thigh bone. Yes, the thigh bone. To you're me, it about, seems like... That has to drop? Yeah, to me, it seems like in order to get the spiral, because I'm wondering, uh, yeah, I'm wondering about that. that. That's a very good question. I think it's, it's something that I think a lot of people have, uh, have a question on because the, you know, uh, some people have a question on the use of the term spiral. So hmm. what is a spiral? Yes. It's, a, it's a curve that is in motion. Hmm. It's, it's it's something is curving and it's moving in a moving in a directional. I have read that the spiral is the most fundamental shape in the universe. That you have this that nothing is is absolutely straight. Everything is kind of curved and it's and and directional. So uh, so that um, whether or not that is the case. It is a helpful image for what we're trying to do here. That is, we want to. So, what, what's happening with a spiral is the spiral is not doing this. The spiral is circling around an axis and 
it's moving in a downward direction. So um, I was writing recently uh, about this and, and saying that one of our first uh, looked at this, first came across this was when I was doing a lot of uh, competitive push hands. And I noticed that, that people, whenever they would move from their back leg to their front leg, that there's this dead spot in between where it was really easy to knock people over, but I was also one of them. I would get knocked over easy if somebody did that to me. And it's because there was this spot there where I was floating or they were floating in the middle. So to show you, it just, I'm, you know, if I'm in my, my front leg and I say, oh, I rock to my back leg or my back leg and I rock to my front leg, there's a lateral movement. That's a two dimensional thing. That is I'm moving from this point to this point you know, if you're doing it side to side, or you'll see this, okay, shift your weight. And so we shift our weight and shift our weight there. And there's a lateral movement. And so I, 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 I floundered around in the dark uh, trial and error for a couple of years. And then I eventually realized that I was looking at a, a three-dimensional problem from two dimensions, that there was, there's this downward energy that had to be in play in order to release the qual. So that there is this, there's a, a quality of down that, uh, that had to be, uh, to be introduced there. So that, uh, that started me on this, this, this whole Sung Kwa thing. So in doing that, going back to setting the knee so first of all, we're establishing, we're setting the ball of the foot. If you don't set the foot in a particular spot, then it's going to roll around based on what you're doing. If your weight shifts, then you're going, your, your foot shifts and, and consequently all the support that you're getting above that, it has to compensate using muscles to create stability. So if, if i am got my front foot there and, you know, I have the ball of my foot, but if I bring my weight out to the outside of my foot or to my heel, or, you know, if it's, if I'm moving around, I have to create tension in my legs in order to compensate for the fact that I'm not really stable in my stance. So one of the insights that, that came up with this is, is that if I plant my foot and I use the ball of the foot as my bullseye, and that's my contact point I'm setting there. In fact, I want you to stand up and just, uh, just do this with me. We've done this before, but I want you to kind of really bring some mindfulness to this right now and just really feel into the, bring your right foot forward, feel the ball of the right foot. And just, you want to kind of, it's like you're pressing down on a button there. And just having that as your stable point. And notice just by doing that, something happens. And just for fun, bring the weight to the outside of your foot and notice what happens then whenever you try to do that. Notice how that affects your stability. And then go back to the ball of your foot and plant that and really just set that. And notice how, oh, if you align to that point, there is a stability there. Now bring your knee and set your knee and you look around for the sweet spot there. You look around for where does that, that knee and ball kind of get together and create a, a real stable position. And just feel into that. Now, take your knee and move that to the outside of your foot. And just notice what happens if, as you move it off of the ball of the foot, what that does to your stability. Bring it over the bubbling well, over the middle of your foot, and notice what happens there. And then bring it back to the ball of the foot on the, on the medial line, the big toe line, and notice how stable that feels. So, what we're doing here is, is doing something that's very, very practical. We're saying, where does it feel right? 
you know, and it, it, it is written that, you know, we get the root is found in the ball of the foot. It, uh, Cheng Meng Ching talks about that. And, uh, but that doesn't make it true. What makes it true is you feel it. You feel that, oh, if I'm feeling into that ball of the foot, then, you know, I've got, there, there's, there's something going on there. There's an energetic connection there. Setting the knee. So having that as you as immobilizing the knee and allows you to then have release to release everything above the quad above because it's all the work's all being done here by your by your leg. So your torso from your torso on up, you're you're able to kind of get nice and loosey goosey about that because. The work is being done. The support work is being done here. Now bring your weight to the outside of your foot and notice what happens if you're trying to get your support. Notice how, your, how it affects your upper body, how it creates compensatory muscular tension in order to be able to, to maintain stability. Your butt gets really tight. Your back gets tight. Your shoulders, everything. And then go back to set the ball, set the knee. And notice that you can then, ah, oh, you can release. Then you can, that gives you your core permission to let go. You're, you're not there yet, but this is the, this is the foundation. Somebody got a question? Yeah, uh, Valerie says, is the knee over the toes or over the ball? Um, that's a great question. So. Let's look at that. So here's my foot. It, my, now my knee is over my heel. That's too far back. So I push it forward, push it out over my toes and just notice what you feel there. For me, there's, it creates a muscular tension whenever, I, uh, whenever my, my knee is that far forward. I feel things get, get very tight and I notice a lot of strain in my knee. If I bring it back so it's right over the ball of the foot, my knee almost disappears. It, uh, there's just, there's no, there's no tightness there at all. Yeah, Valerie. Okay, it's not necessarily asking about the forward and back, side but side to side. So okay. is it actually set in alignment with the toes, but you're still over the ball or are you more to the medial? Well, I find your sweet spot. Okay. okay. And I think that different, pe different people have different legs, you know, different shapes of legs. And, you know, there's something called, a, I think it's called a Q angle. And it's how far, you know, your, your knees are, are bowed out. In that you know there's a certain you know if you're they're bowed out too much then you, you know you have bow legs you know that then you're gonna have a different sweet spot than someone who's who's knock kneed right you, so there's gonna be a different sweet spot there I would say that ideally you want to kind of start to reshape things I've found that most people that I've encountered it's not everybody, of course, but most people I've encountered with bow legs, a lot of it has to do with hip tension. Whenever they are able to go sun qua, then a lot of that bonus disappears. So it, uh, uh, so I think, uh, I'm not going to say that's true of everybody, but I know for a lot of people that is the case. So if you have, so in this case, notice where my knee is relevant to my to the ball of my foot. I have it right along the medial line. And for me, the farther I move laterally, the weaker it gets. So I made a mistake early on in my research in this saying, hey, if that's good, then that's even better. And that's not true. So kids don't try this at home. Uh, you don't want to get the knee in, even though there may be some structural and temporary structural advantage, and I found that there was, which is why I was, it was encouraged 
but it will do knee damage if you if you're doing that. Your for the the knee the patella will won't uh, track right in the condyles, and it'll create irritation and um, some sloppiness in the uh, in the cartilage in your knee, and you don't want that. You, so so I'm saying. For me, the ideal spot is right over the big, the, over the ball. Okay, uh, and uh, and but everybody should test it out for themselves and notice where it is, where you start to feel the tension coming in. I notice that immediately when I move off the ball, I notice hip tension coming in. So that is, uh, we're talking about how to get some qua here, how to how to be able to to establish a stable base so that we can then get Sun Kwa. So what we have, we have setting the ball, we're setting the knee, we're finding that sweet spot. So then we have, uh, if I want to spiral down to the right, notice that my leg doesn't move. I'm gonna put my hand right on the middle of my thigh and I spiral down to the right and notice my hand, I'll do it facing you, okay? I spiral down to the right, my hand doesn't move. My thigh doesn't move, okay? Notice that uh, this goes back to your question, Stan. What I'm not doing is this, okay? I'm not dropping my thigh. I am, I am spiraling down, the, 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 the thigh stays, stays in the same place. What's happening is the rotation is happening internally at, at the qua, at, the, uh, at this junction of, of the thigh and the torso, this inguinal area. And inguinal just means referring to the groin. So at your groin, you are, you are releasing and allowing the, the space to be created by the rotation of the hip joint, okay? So it's uh, kind of like a universal joint on a, uh, uh, on a car where you're taking energy, which is going like this from your drive shaft, it's, going, it's circling around like that, and you've got wheels that are perpendicular to that, and you want the wheels to go this way, and the drive shaft's going this way, so there's a universal joint where you bang into that, and it transfers the rotational energy this way into rotational energy this way. It's a kind of similar kind of deal. You're taking the vertical energy here and you're turning it into rotational energy. Okay, does that make sense? That worked that for you, Stan? Good. That was an excellent explanation. Thank you. <laughs> I agree, I agree, because that was good. Now so, I'm starting well, to whenever see. I say spiral, whenever I say spiral, this is the, the, the rotation is happening. Notice that my butt is not going sideways at all. As I'm, rotating, I'm, I'm, I'm augering in. It's like a uh, brace and bit. If you ever seen one of the carpenter's tool where you hold down on the handle here and there's a drill bit going into the ground and you're circling around like this, rotating it, which now we use electric drills, which do the same thing. But the, uh, so that spiraling kind of screws your energy into the earth. And it's, um, think of it a little bit like drilling for oil. You're, you're drilling down, drilling down, and what happens is, oh, you, you find that chi and whoosh, the earth chi comes up like oil is shooting up and uh, through the uh, through the system, so you have you're drilling for chi, you're drilling down, and it's uh, it's a release rather than a push down. You're not pushing down on your your on the drill. You're just ah, you're just allowing the weight of the body to settle in. So there is a downward motion, but the down is not happening in the legs. The angle the angle of the knee. Boom. Notice that the angle of the knee doesn't change, right? The angle of the thigh and the knee doesn't change. All right. So that's, uh, that's setting the knee. And that's also 
spiraling down. So here we are, ah, oh, we're spiraling down. So let's do it nice and slow motion. Use that, uh, use that. So here we go, we got, put your right foot forward, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, find your sweet spot. Reach up with your crown point, your knee one. Tuck in your chin. Bring your elbows out a little bit. Get some elbow gin going here. Point your index fingers. Good. And pick up your back heel. So you're really focusing on the front leg now. So then feel the ball, set the knee, and release the quad. You're sitting down into that quad. You're spiraling down. And just hang there. Just feel into that, that, and just really relax your quad, relax that your butt, relax your legs, and feel your your sung, your good. It doesn't mean that the muscles aren't aren't working. They're working like crazy, and you can feel it. But they are. It's a passive working. It's kind of like uh, and go back to center. I just I'll just show you something just as a. Uh, Thought about this as a as a, a a demonstration. If I have a uh, I have a kettlebell here, and I want to I want to push up. I'm using I'm contracting my triceps muscles and reaching up. Okay, and what I'm doing is this is a yang impulse. I'm I'm setting my shoulder and reaching up, and that's a yang impulse. Now as I come down and hang here, okay? What's happening here is I'm releasing muscular contraction to be able to let that, to let that drop down. I let it down a little more and it's hanging there. I'm still using muscle, but it is a passive muscle. This is Sung. Sung is not just schlumping. It's not, you know, as Jonathan says, droopy boy. It's Sung is releasing into structure. The uh, ideogram in the, in the old Chinese was like a, a pine tree with the branches coming down. So you can think about that. So the, the branches come down, they're like, oh, they settle in and they don't, they don't fall all the way. They fall down to the support of the structure, right? So any position we take we're settling into the support of the structure. It's gonna be work. So feel that ball, set that knee, spiral down to the right and just feel into that. Just settle in and allow the yin chi to rise. Feel that chi that you're drilling for there, allow it to rise and you're going to feel it in your hands real quick. Okay, and then go back to center. Now spiral down to the left, feel the ball, set the knee again. So each time we do that, we consciously set. Okay, we set the ball, we set the knee. Why? Because this establishes the yin pole that allows us to move. We then are able to generate this power that comes from sung. So even though we're releasing, there is definitely power being used here. You can feel the, the work that's being done by your by your legs and turn back to center. I just notice how that, ah, oh, okay. There's you just a couple of turns there and we have a, we have definitely, we're doing some work there. Now feel the ball of your left foot, set your left knee, pick up your front heel. Okay, so you wanna find that sweet spot in your back leg, your left leg, reach with the crown, Feel the ball, set the knee and spiral down to the left. Really release down and get very soon. So when I say relax, it just means that you're releasing the contraction. You're not letting go completely, you're just releasing a bit and then you turn back to center. And spiral down. Notice that the leg doesn't change. All the changes is that internal rotation at the hip joint. This is big kids. This is, this is 
this is, uh, uh, it's huge. Okay, and then turn back to center. And notice too, whenever I turn back, I am not bobbing up. I'm not pushing away from the earth to, to turn back. I am just rotating using, using the quad, using the waist. In the classics, they talk about turning the waist. Okay, this is what they're referring to. Okay, so yes, the waist is turning, but how do you turn the waist? They don't give specific instructions about, about the quad. I've never seen it in the, in the old classics. They don't talk about the quad, but it's, that's, they took that for granted. But the turning the waist is happening through that. Okay, and then feel the ball, set the knee and spiral down to the right. So you're sitting down, augering in, and turn back to center. Is there a question? Yeah, Nora wants to know, uh, how does this compare or, oh, where'd it go? Hold on. How, how does this compare to, the, to twisting? Twisting. Or contrast or compare to twisting. Okay, so twisting, and this is, uh, watch what, this is the way I interpret twisting. Okay, so here I am, feel the ball, set the knee, and I turn. Okay, so what's happening is my whole body is turning, so I have a twist. So doing it this way, so there's like that, and my hips and my, my shoulders are, are no longer aligned. So this, um, in Tai Chi, this is a no-no. Uh, I'm not going to say it's, it's not, um, not good for other things because in Bagua, we twist all the time. But in Tai Chi, it's not how Tai Chi works. So you want to keep the shoulders and the hips lined up. So, so the, there's no twist that's happening above, above the waist. So it's better to think of it just in terms of turning, so spiraling down and then turning back than it is to twist because people, whenever you tell someone to twist, what I have found is, and even when you don't tell them to twist, what I found that is a lot of people, there'll be a turn and they'll initiate the turn from the shoulders and that will create a twist and that will break the energetic connection. Any other questions on that? Okay, we're good. Okay, let's go back to the, let's go to the, to the left leg now. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, pick up the right heel. Good. And spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that left claw. The leg stays, in fact, put your, put your hand on that and just, you know, try to see yourself as you do that as a, uh, you know, notice that your hand doesn't move. Your body stays vertical and come back to center. Spiral down to the right. The left, the, the left thigh doesn't move. All the actions happening internally and turn back to center. And spiral down to the right. You're sitting into that. Use the ball of the foot as your pivot point. Keep that as your pivot point. You want to be very mindful of that. And how often you do it? Every time. Every time you turn, turn back to center. You, every time you turn, you feel the ball, you set the knee, you, you then you execute. So there's a mindfulness element to all of this. And go back to the back foot, pick up your front heel, Feel the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the right. Really sit into that and turn back to center and spiral down to the right. Feel that, that leg is not moving and back to center. Spiral down to the left and back to center. Spiral down to the left. And back to center. Good. Okay. So now we're going to do it side to side. And so we're going to be able to shift between the legs. We feel feel the ball of the of the left foot. Set the left knee. Spiral down to the right. 
and then turn to the left. So now that your left leg is substantial. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So you're starting to load up the right leg and then you turn and feel the ball of the left, set the left knee, spiral down to the right and then turn and you're loading up the left leg. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left and turn back to center. So this way you, you're able to move between the two. Front to back, feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, good. And now feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the, to the left. So you're loading up the left quad now and turn back to center. So now your weight is primarily in your left leg. Feel the ball of the right foot, push your right knee forward without putting any weight into it. So this is a real important point here. You're not lunging forward. You're just kind of pushing that knee out to you set it. You don't move, you don't load that leg up until you have set the ball, set the knee. And then you say, oh, I'm gonna spiral down to the right. Okay, now I'm loading up my, my front leg and I turn over to center. And then I'm gonna to go to my back leg now, feel the ball, set the knee, and I'm gonna spiral down to the right this time. I'm gonna turn this way. So I'm loading up the left leg and turn back to center. I'm gonna feel the ball of the right foot, push my right knee forward, spiral down to the left, and then turn back to center. Okay, any questions? Okay, we have, uh, speak up, uh, my, my I have a question. engineer has, has oh, uh, I have a question. Build. Okay, I was gonna say, Rick, the, uh, just simply mechanically, is it right that the ball, the head of the femur in the ball is stable and you're just revolving the socket part of that joint around the ball? Uh, yes, I, I'd say that'd be, a way of, that'd be a way of describing it. I, okay. think that, I think that is true. Okay. I think that is true. Anybody else? I can't, can't see you. Okay. Andrew. Andrew. You, uh, you know, what goes down must come up. You know, <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you seem to avoid saying that we're spiraling back up when we turn. I'm saying you're definitely not spiraling up. But then, you, you know, then, the, you, then there would just be constantly going down. There would be no. It's, it's kind of like an Escher print. Escher, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, it's you're down going, all the way down. All the way down. It's all the way down. It's down all the way down. It's all the way down. It's <laughs> totally sounds really funny. Um, uh, so yes. So so it, I don't want to be glib about this, but it's this is this is the way it is. You're spiraling down. You're turning. You're spiraling down. You're turning. You're spiraling down. You're turning. It even though even though the um, um, it defies logic. And what's happening is the intention of spiraling down is what rotates the hip joint. Rotating it back, just you're 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 bringing it back into uh, into its original position, but it's uh, there's a a release that occurs when you're spiraling that, that you get. So then you turn again, and oh, here we go again. It uh, even though you're not bobbing up, you are. Um, your body adjusts. So why I don't like to think of it as, as coming up, even though there may be some of that happening, yeah. is that what you definitely are fighting here, and this is, the whole reason I came up with this was, uh, in fact, I think it was you, Stan, that inspired this particular insight, was that, uh, um, It's correcting a, an unconscious, deeply embedded impulse to push away from the earth that we've had since we learned how to walk. So a lot of what, what I'm doing here is corrective. We're trying to fix a problem which is built in at the pre-conscious level 
that so we don't even see it and don't even think it's a problem if we do see it. But so we have to kind of talk it down, 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 just to overcome the unconscious push away that will happen if you don't pay attention to it. Okay, does that make sense, Andrew? Yes, yeah, so, but this is so this differs quite a bit from what we learned with William Chen. Yes, even though it's, there's an element of it of the spiraling, but you've. It, I, I, I owe a lot to uh, to his explorations to take me to this, but it definitely takes what he did and it goes a different direction. Okay. And uh, and he he acknowledged that he says, yeah, Rick's doing stuff that I'm not I'm not doing. <laughs> so it. Uh, uh, yeah, Dennis. Yeah, it seems to me you have to not consciously think about shifting your weight or it's like you set your foot and once you start to spiral, it's like your weight shifts without even thinking about it. Yes. Foot goes you, down and it, you think and, about and, shifting and your weight, it's going to be wrong. Pardon? If, if you think shift my weight, it's going to be wrong. Yeah, yeah. It's just that once you spiral, then your weight shifted without even. That's right. It happens. So don't even erase shift from your vocabulary. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. Don't don't even. It's like automatic. It's like once we, but you have to set your foot, put your foot there, and then just spiral and spiral down, and it all happens for you as if by yeah. magic, as if by magic. Cool. Anybody else? Those are, those are great questions. Okay, everybody good? Okay, so uh, so we got setting the joint to produce power. That power good, not power bad. And that we have, we are able to generate power by the, by setting. So one of the things we do when we set the elbow, boom, we go like that. And we then rotate the forearm. We need this to be set. So it's not just kind of like doing this, right? Where you see a lot of, a lot of Qigong people just kind of like just wave their arms around. No, it's, it's like, boom, you set the elbow, you know, and then you rotate and this generates a tremendous amount of, of Jin. Just that little rotation. We've done this exercise, right? Where, where we do this, boom. So that is a way of, of really, embedding the uh, that a uh, feeling for for that rotation from the elbow you can even hold your elbow everybody just grab your grab your elbow and rotate your forearm reach with your thumb as you turn this way reach with your little fingers you turn this way and just feel into that and notice that it it gets things cranking immediately okay so even though if the body is moving I want to set my elbow with reference to the body. So it's it's set here. And so that, oh, so I can, as I turn, I am able to generate power. And there are certain movements, of course, where you, you're moving from the shoulder or the shoulder, the elbow is set and then it leads the shoulder. And that's cool too. But these are momentary still points in a very fluid process. When we're doing Taiji, everything is very fluid. But if it's just fluid, you're not going to get any power out of it. If, uh, if within that fluidity, you have little moments of stasis that you can then angle off of, then you can create Jin. A set point helps to define the form, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, so Maria said a set point helps to define the form. Yeah. So you're, you know, you you create a shape by this by establishing some set points, and even if it's a transitional shape, it's it's something that for that moment that you are able to generate power. Yes. So when we're starting off, we have many set points. We have the ball of the foot. We have the muon. Mm -hmm. We have the elbows mm -hmm. and um, just having those things in alignment creates a shape. 
for starters, that always that generates energy just by standing in that shape. Right, right. Did everybody hear what Maria was talking about? I can't, uh, I can't tell. I, I don't know if they could hear you. Oh. So, um, so yeah, so what Maria was saying is like, we start off, say we start off here, we want to create lots of still points and have those as reference points so that when we move, we are moving with reference to the stillnesses. And even though I'm, you know, once I start moving, things are 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 moving, you know, everything is, is moving, it's within that there are still points. So as I reach out here, I'm reaching with my elbow. And even though my body is turning, the the elbow is establishing a a point with reference to the shoulder with reference to the hand. I turn and notice that the elbow is set with, with regard to the shoulder. Okay, so then you you get, that's how we generate the, the juice there. You know, Rick, oh, Rick, I wanted to say, you know, I'm reminded, I used to be a tennis player and I'm reminded of, uh, as an, ex an example, uh, ground strokes in tennis, the way you yes. generate power by getting your body into it. You don't freeze your arm, say in your forehand, you don't freeze the arm relative to the body, but you're kind of, there's a phase when the arm is more set relative to the body that allows you to get your, your, your weight into the shot and you generate power. Is that a, is that a good example? Um, yeah, uh, yes or no, but if you look at someone like say, uh, uh, Dominic Team, and you look at his, his ground strokes, you'll see, different points there where he, you know, he'll be standing like this and he's going to do a, a backhand. He'll, he'll turn like this. He'll reach with his elbow and this will be set, right? And then this will come down. He'll set this, set the elbow here again. And this is coming through and then he'll boom. And he hits, you know, he hits a backhand harder than just about anybody. And even though he's only like 160 pounds, he's able to, to hit a uh, 100 mile an hour backhand. Same thing with his forehand. He hits a, the hardest forehand in, in, in pro tennis. And it comes from, there are points where he's setting and then he's generating generating the power from those set points. So, uh, so there is, yes, there is kinetic motion there's, there's that, he winds up, he gets the, the potential, and then, then he, boom, he turns and, and everything, there's a kinetic chain, but in the midst of it, it's um, kind of like a, like a uh, sectional staff in, uh, uh, in, in martial arts, you know, where you have these whirling uh, sticks that are hooked together at hinge points, so they're able to, to whip and, and generate a lot of power that way. So, uh, so uh, yes, so that's, uh, that's what I would say about, you know, its application in tennis. Were you gonna do that exercise? Uh, if we have time, do we have, we can only got, uh, we only got about five minutes to go. It says 852. So um, actually any other questions? So this, these are all great. Scott. So in your, you were just, when you were just showing us with your elbow, you were doing the beginning of um, wave. wave hands like clouds, right? But now eventually that your hand, arm is going to be all the way out straight. Yes. So can, you, can you show, can you explain how you're setting your elbow through that hole from, from there sure. all the way until your arm is straight? Sure, sure. Okay, here we go. So, so what's happening here, let's say, I, I, I'll do the whole description. So I feel the ball of the right foot set my right knee and spiral down to the right. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm, using this, this is my stable point here, and I'm going to then turn from the claw and I reach, reach with my fingers and also reach with my elbow. If I don't reach for my elbow, if I don't set my elbow, the action is gonna all happen from the shoulder. So what then happens is I have this very long lever 
with a fulcrum up here. So any power that I get here is going to be, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty weak. But if I come up like this and I'm reaching, I set my elbow. So then I'm no, no longer, this is no longer my fulcrum. This is, so this is a, a much shorter lever. And then I reach out and I'm coming in here, feeling the ball of my right foot, set my right knee and I turn. So as I turn, I'm reaching with that elbow as I'm coming across. And same thing with this one, my hands coming across. So both these, so in this situation, if someone were to, Maria, you wanna come over here and give me a, give me a, a hand here? So if, um, why don't you go over to this side? So what happens here is if I'm coming across here and I try to pivot from my shoulder and Maria, stops this, I can't, I can't move her because this is just not strong enough to be able to get through that, that amount of resistance. But if I come, I set my elbow. And so now this is fixed with reference to my body. So I'm no longer pushing with my shoulder muscles. I'm pushing with my quad, with my torso, with my thigh, with all the energy that's moving. It's a whole body energetic connection. So whenever I do that, so this is a weapon, boom. It's also, you know, it also can be a, a nice kind of fluid motion, which is then opening up the joints. And then I get, I get over to here. That's the same thing, here I am. And I'm reaching out. I'm not just reaching with my, from the shoulder, I'm reaching from my elbows so that I'm able to generate a tremendous amount of, of energy just by, by reaching out like that. <laughs> cool, thank you. <laughs> Does that, that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Good. So even, even as I'm turning, I'm setting. Ah, oh. and then you're able to then release muscular tension and you're still using your muscles. You're always using your muscles, but you're not contracting them. You're reaching. And then, so then the movements are no longer, no, not just powerful, but they're also can be very graceful. So you're able to allow the energy to move through, allow the energy to move you and you're uh, able to express the energy in a very fluid and artistic way. Yeah. I just wanted to make a point that you're not setting. We're going to talk over here. Get, okay. I just wanted to make the point that. We can hear her just fine. You, can, yeah. you can hear her? Okay. You're not setting the elbow at a point in space where you're not going to move it from that point in space. Yes. You're setting it in relationship to your body. Everybody got that? Good. So it. Uh, so I it is. It. I mean, I don't quite grasp. I get setting your foot and knee against the ground, but what do you set your elbow against if it's just out in okay. space? Well, let's say I'm turning. Here you go, full body. Here we go. So I'm turning, right? I set my elbow and turned. The elbow is still moving, isn't it? So it's not fixed in space. It's fixed with relation to my body. So this is this and this are are linked up so that when I turn, I'm not reaching from my from my shoulder. I am coming through with my whole body energetic connection. So I don't have to work hard at all to create a big effect. Something where if I'm trying to come across with my with my shoulder muscles without setting my arm, if I'm not setting my elbow, then I'm very likely to, to injure my shoulder by doing that. So it's like it's connected to your shoulder. Uh, it, th this become they become one piece. Okay. They become one piece. So you're, oh, you're turning. Your arm via your 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 uh, elbow, right? I mean, your elbow is what allows the arm to be one piece. Yeah. You don't stay set the forearm or set the you know, the upper part of your, you know, your muscles up here, you're setting the elbow that 
sets the whole arm automatically. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Like the, knee, the knee and the ball of foot become one piece. Your elbow yes. and shoulder become one piece. Pay the man. That's good. Good. Okay. So that's uh, great. Thank you all very much. That was uh, great questions. And I really appreciate your, your input. And uh, thank you all so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you.